So get, you guys, you guys tell me, um, would you guys like this for high ranked play or low ranked play? High rank? Okay, we'll start. We'll start with high rank. Okay, so so let me let me put this as a caveat because I think ironically, even though it's more pros, this one might is is unquestionably more. Um, Situ I don't know, situation is not the right word. Up in the air, subject to change at any point in time. Um, because balance changes might change things. And the other thing you ha guys have to understand, and I'll say it till I die, that pro meta is not dictated by five or six heroes that are strong. It is dictated by one or two heroes that are strong and then heroes that synergize with those heroes as well. In other words, if you think about goats, you're not thinking about like, man, Lucio, oh my gosh, that hero is so strong. No, you're thinking that Lucio is just a hero that fit really well with D.Va and Brig, right? It would fit well with Ryan, who fit well with D.Va, right? Again, Ryan wasn't especially oppressive in that situation, but if you're gonna play a brawl comp, you wanna ring. That's just kind of how it is. So with this in mind, <coughs> I might rank heroes lower or higher than what you see in Overwatch League meta. Um, but it's just because my initial impression is long term over the course of a year, year and a half, these heroes I think will relatively be decent um, given the situations. So, and I'll try and give my arguments on this. And also keep in mind that I'm not perfect either. Um, uh, obviously I don't haven't seen every single team scrim. I'm not a big brain, I don't have the combined brain of every Korean and Western coach in the history of the world. So this is just my opinion from what little I've seen. Honor right now I think is probably pretty good. Um, I think I was a little bit surprised at how strong she was. Um, I think Nade is definitely a little bit of a weaker uh, thing for her. I'm trying to think of like what in Overwatch 2 has made her stronger. I don't know what in Overwatch 2 has made her stronger. She just feels less squishy. Not having to nade yourself is great. Nano is still really strong. Having a gun to shoot people on the off angles is really strong. Um, having a sleep dart to defend against angles. Like I feel like she's, I don't know. I might put her in all right. I'm gonna put her in all right. I might adjust these things as I go. Um, she's a fine healer, hero. She's a fine hero. Ash is probably all right as well. There's nothing particularly wrong with Ash. Bap is probably all right as well. This is gonna be, by the way, this is very tentative. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time thinking about this. I'm just gonna quickly zoom through it. Bastion is probably bad, um, at least in pro, like higher level play, just based off the fact that CC still toasts him. Um, any sort of like, but really a lot of cooldowns toast him uh, and range toasts him. I think Brig is probably nice. I don't think Brig is particularly strong, um, but she's not trash. She still functions in her niche okay. Um, Cass is probably nice. I think the flashbang nerf, the flashbang change, I think was probably a little bit of a nerf, but he's, he's fine. He's not terrible. Um, I think doom is all right. I think doom is all right. I think doom got a little overrated, a little underrated, and then a little overrated, um, in the pro meta that was happening behind the scenes in alpha. Um, D.Va has to be amazing. There's just so much flexibility with the hero. I think Echo is probably... I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Echo right now. I think the copy nerf is a big, big deal because you're copying tanks most of the time, unless you're copying Tracer, but Tracer is also nerfed. So uh, it's not, not not great. I think Genji is actually pretty strong. Lack of CC helps. The Tracer nerf also helps because now you're talking about the best flanker in the game, hands down, got a significant nerf, and that opens up other flankers to be good. Uh, I think Ball is okay. Uh, not particularly strong, but you know he's not weak. He's just, he's just not as strong as other tanks. I think Hanzo is fine. Junkrat is, I mean, I just think Junkrat's bad, but honestly, a lot of this has more to do with the fact that it's just, he's a very map specific pick. He will always be a map specific pick until they rework him a little bit. Um, you will definitely see him in a couple of maps, I think, but outside of that, no. Um, whereas I think these heroes have options. Maybe they're not exactly in the meta, but they have more options to be seen in more maps. I think Lucio is good. Uh, heroes really, really, really good at peeling especially since the Brig nerf, Lucio as a peeler is probably the best peeler in the game now with the Shield Bash nerf. Um, and the ultimate costing has also helped him a great deal as well. Uh, obviously the one weird thing about Lucio is on paper, you're like, how does he help off angles? How does he control space? Well, we need to understand that Lucio is quite good at controlling off angles and quite good at controlling space at the higher level because you have Lucios who are way better at wall writing. They're way better at moving around the map. They're way better at taking duels. They're not the Platinum Lucio bot sitting on cart. If you're the Platinum Lucio bot sitting on cart, you are a terrible support to play in Overwatch 2. But if you're not, the hero is actually pretty good. Um, he's also 
relatively decent in a lot of the metas that we've seen over time. I think May is actually pretty good. Um, the mouse one change, the freeze change is actually a net positive in a lot of ways because it actually helps her flexibility against non Ryan. In other words, the May sitting in front of Reinhardt was obnoxious, but she's a lot better against Genji's. She's a lot better against other DPS that she can reach because 100 DPS is a lot. That's a lot of damage and it's actually not that hard to land either. Uh, Mercy's okay. Not particularly uh, popular right now. She's a little squishy, but she's not trashed here. There's definitely situations where she's usable. I think the same thing goes for Moira. Again, her survivability alone makes her popular in some situations. I'm going to put Orisa here as well. I think Orisa's probably bad. Let me put this, me put this with a caveat. Orisa is bad the way she's currently being played, but I think if you had... If you had a main tank player or a tank player, and I guess now, OTP Arissa for a month, month and a half, and threw him into an Overwatch League scrim, knowing exactly what he was doing, you could probably see an Arissa comp work. Um, there's just, it's just, it's very difficult for Overwatch League players to justify putting a lot of time into a hero that's not immediately obvious is really good, um, because it's, it has to be a huge time investment, right? What if it's, what if the hero is just trash? Then it's a huge gamble and, and you, you could have been training other things. So you, what you'll probably see is Orisa becomes more relevant in the future as contenders teams, maybe even tier three teams. Maybe somebody crazy 15 year old kid gets out there and becomes cracked at the hero and solves the hero for us. That's likely to happen with Orisa. I think Orisa has way more options than either of these two other heroes and maybe even more options than some of these heroes. <clears throat> Um, I think also if little if she receives a few buffs, she's, she might jump all the way to like all right or even good. Farah, eh, she's okay. She's quite quite good um, on some maps. Um, the fact that you can't turtle against Farah anymore is a big deal. But also she's still like she's not going to be farming up a barrage and bullying tanks and smashing you out. She really does have to kind of play like the yes and taking duels approach. Um, I think Reaper is all right. He's a lot worse against tanks, but he's still pretty good against like assassinating people. Um, his, his value as a flanker is okay. I actually think I might put him in nice just because I don't think he's actually that particularly strong of a hero. He just meshed relatively well with an early on meta that was popular in the Overwatch League. Uh, uh, <clears throat> um, I mean, I, I talked about why the Arista spot is here. I actually think Arista has a good argument for being nice, but nobody's gonna be able to put the time into her to put her in nice yet. Um, Maybe we put her in nice as just a potential, but not yet. I actually think Ryan is all right. <clears throat> not particularly meta, but has a lot of opportunities to get stuff done. His flexibility buffs were huge. Um, gives him a lot more options. Hog isn't terrible. Um, there's no real tank that's, that's absolutely trash. I mean, the fact that he can still one shot, I think Sigma is fine. I think Sigma actually benefited a lot from the survivability nurse because against Sigma versus Dive, the problem wasn't the fact that she, it was his cooldowns were useless, Rock is useless, Shift is useless, Shield is useless, his damage is useless. The problem with Sigma versus a lot of Dive comps is he just died instantly. He just got hacked or dashed, and like if you, your, your Shift didn't matter, you just died instantly. But the, the survivability buffs, there's like a... Um, the return on investment for some of these survival goes affected more tanks more than others, I think. Um, I think you see tanks like Sigma and Zarya doing way better in dive than they did before because they're actually a lot harder to just dive and kill. You can't just dive and kill and one shot a Sigma anymore. Um, so he can actually have time to actually get value out of his damage, to get value out of his rock. Um, so Sojourn, I think, is actually um, bad-ish nice right now. I might have to shift some of these around. Um, I think she probably is nice, but you're not going to see her play probably much at all. I think Soldier's good. <clears throat> Soldier's good. Soldier benefits a lot from Tracer being nerfed. Soldier benefits a lot from one fewer tank, so he can take those angles without being contested. Remember, he's a very, very good dual DPS, so if there's no tanks clearing out the space, then he's not worried about how much damage he does to a D.Va or how much damage he does to a Winston. He's worried about the fact that he can win a 1v1, and he doesn't have to worry about a 6 damage Tracer. He only has to worry about a five damage tracer. That tracer nerf is a big deal. Um, Sombra is, I don't know. Sombra, Sombra is all right. There are niches where she's good. Um, she was probably good or even amazing earlier, but she's definitely not anymore. You could make even make an argument for her being niche and nice, but I'm not so sure. Symmetra is bad. Very, very, very niche pick, uh, but nothing has changed about her. And she really, really struggles with the fact that there is one, there's no matrix or there's one viewer shield. Um, I think Torb is bad as well. Um, you know, again, like the turret is not a good matchup against DPS. DPS break it too fast. It's better against like 
heroes without as much range. But the big deal with Torv is the fact that he was already a niche pick, but then he got nerfed further by the fact that his E no longer gives armor. That's a big, big deal. Temporary health is not as good as armor. This is really, really big deal. Tracer is all right. Um, I might put her in good or all right. Um, I'm going to say all right, just given the situation. The, the damage nerf really hurt her. Before the damage nerf, she was amazing slash really, really good, which was surprising to nobody. Um, but the damage nerf was a big deal. It was a really, really big deal. Widowmaker is all right or good. I think Widow was, actually has an argument for probably being good. Um, she's played on a lot of maps, she's played in a lot of situations. The, the HP buff was a big deal. The somber nerf to where she wasn't just instantly one-shotting Widows because it takes forever to hack people now was a big deal. The Tracer nerf was also a big deal. Um, <clears throat> one fewer tank, also a big deal. Widow is definitely stronger. Um, Diva gets three second matrix. And you're talking about a hero that can help anybody anywhere at any time. She's not necessarily somebody you're going to see in every single meta, but she's always on the tip of the tongue, if that makes any sense. She could always be, oh, well, maybe Diva would be better here. That's kind of the way I look at it. Winston's all right. Um, he benefits from having things like Ana and Lucio in meta and things like Genji being decent. Like he's going to benefit from that as well. Um, but... Yeah, we'll see. I think Winston has a good argument to be better than Doom in a lot of circumstances. Um, Zarya, I think, is quite good. I think Zarya is uh, a hero that's, again, going to be a little bit situational, but what she does now is good. And I think Zen is... Hmm, I'm going to say all right. I might put him in nice, <clears throat> but I think like there's a good argument for thinking that Zen is definitely still a staple in a couple of compositions. And if you're really good with controlling the map, he isn't as squishy as people are making him out to be. You just have to be way more proactive with how you're doing. If you get dove, you're gonna die. I mean, that's always been the case, and that's definitely the case, more the case now than ever. All right, let's, let's give this a check. Impressions hero tier list based on my experience in the Overwatch Alpha playtest to help you prepare for the beta. No sponsor today, just make sure to come over to my streams at twitch.tv slash carq during Overwatch 2 and my other channel, the Carc Hives, where I do more tier lists and gameplay, Car Clips, Spanish, Portuguese channels, Twitter, Insta, TikTok, yada, yada, yada. There's going to be a significant balance patch before you get your hands on the game on April 26th, so this list is going to be pointless in a few days, but speculation is fun, and looking back at what change from patch to patch can really contextualize why certain heroes are good or bad. And everybody has different opinions, and establishing the context of each tier list is important, so listen up. This tier list is for the average competitive ranked player, solo queue. This is not the tier list for the pro. Okay, good to know. Great, great context given in there. So like, let's just say gold through diamond, uh, silver through diamond, that's what we're going for. And this is, I'm gonna try and remember the stuff that was from alpha. Okay, so from alpha, where do we put diva? Let's actually just skip to the end. This will be really easy. Okay, S, 100% agreed. Arissa and strong, no. No, 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 no. You can make an argument that her weaknesses are less likely to be exploited in lower ranks. But you can also make a very good argument, which I'm going to, that her strengths are also going to be a, hard, a lot harder to exploit in lower ranks as well. Things like Javelin, things like her spinning E, uh, her ultimate, all of those things are going to be a lot harder to, to, to execute in lower ranks, like disproportionately. She's actually a relatively skillful hero in terms of execution, as well as her gun's a little bit tricky to handle as well. I think you can make an argument for niche, uh, 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 or, but there's no way she's an A. Sojourn in A uh, for the average player, I might even put her in S and Alpha tier. I know she's an aim dependent hero, so maybe that's why she's an A. Soldier in A is perfectly reasonable. I think, especially like Soldier's gonna be quite strong, I think, in lower ranks. Sombra, <clears throat> no way that she's, um, no way that she's uh, A in, in mid tiers. I think B playable. Uh, I think she definitely bumped up a tier. Uh, again, this is from Alpha. This uh, Sombra now is probably C. And, and maybe even lower and lower ranks. Um, but in but in Alpha, Sombra was pretty strong. Tracer, no, I don't think, frankly, Tracer, I mean, yeah, actually, you know, actually, actually, yes, Tracer belongs in A. On and no, on and I, I don't, mm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, I, I don't think so. I think it's a lot harder to get value out of nades and sleeps uh, with one fewer tank than it used to be. Because it used to be you could just nade enemy tank line, you could sleep the enemy tank, there's just low hanging fruit value there. That's was one fewer tank now. Um, Moira, I can see is reasonable at being strong in low, uh, mid, mid ranks because she just doesn't die to DPS very often. So that's that's value in of itself. Uh, and it was is definitely might be, is gonna be more of a struggle for a lot of average players. Uh, Doomfist being playable, I, I don't know, to be honest. I, 
Um, I would, might consider putting him a little bit lower, but yeah. Roadhog, I think you could even bump him up a tier in lower ranks um, because like, if you land your hook, like it's just it's just dead and nobody's going to contest you anymore. You're impossible to kill. Like you're even harder to kill than you were in live. And like that just to me, that just makes Roadhog significantly stronger. And if you compare something like a Roadhog to Orisa, I think a Roadhog is just going to be like more easy to get stuff done, more easy to do what you're supposed to be doing. Um, Sigma, that seems fair. I mean, he's going to be harder to kill. I mean, the ultimate's a little bit stronger. Uh, the rock does a little bit more damage. I mean, yeah, I think maybe you could even, yeah, I think it's fine. Ball, I don't, I don't see in any world in which Ball is super easy, but I, I I feel a lot less comfortable commenting on Ball, though. Zarya, yeah, I think Zarya is probably playable. Um, let, me, let, me, let, me just, let me do this. Let me just, let me look for the low-hanging fruit here, because a lot of these are just like super, I'm just not sure, I don't know, can't be sure 100%, so I'm not going to really split hairs over some of these. Um, um i think lucio here is reasonable you could put him lower maybe depending on the rank but like assuming it's like a platinum diamond it's probably reasonable to put him here okay so this is where i disagree i think ryan being niche is no 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 no. ryan ryan demands so much less healing now and has so much more flexibility i think he must be bumped up the playable if certainly strong i would probably swap places with Arisa and reinhardt here i think this is really really not not good i think winston also can go to playable because again with the weaknesses of winston is in the mid lower ranks people were really struggling to get value out of the hero but now it's a lot easier to just get space um obviously you need to min max amount of space that you get but i think it's like it's not too hard to get value out of winston because you just don't immediately blow up so like a lot of these tanks where it was like struggling to get stuff done before you instantly died um they got a disproportionate i think buff from some of these hp and incoming damage things um no way bastion's in c tier no way i could you could very arguably put bastion in b tier in low, low rank, silver, gold, Bastion should probably go to A tier because his ultimates almost guarantee at least one kill every single time it's used. Uh, and his shift as well, the movement is a, is a big deal. Um, uh, junk probably needs to be bumped up as well because Riptar is just unstoppable in lower ranks. I mean, I think that's just a general rule for junk. I mean, he's still a niche pick. May is fine, Sim is fine. I think Torb probably could be bumped up the playable just because Torb is always more OP in lower ranks. Um, and I don't think Mercy deserves being this low either, because I think the, the the low hanging fruit of her shift makes her a lot harder to punish in lower ranks. For example, you can play Mercy against Dive in lower ranks, but you can't play Mercy against Dive in higher ranks. So I think Mercy's weaknesses are less exploitable in lower ranks. Genji in D tier is terrible. Genji should be playable. Um, there's nothing about Genji that's necessarily weaker. Even if we consider the alpha, uh, there's no way that like Genji's in D tier. Like he's weak, yes, weaker. He's still like a weaker DPS, but. The tracer nerves, the la the reduction of CC have been nothing but buffs to him, really. Um, so he must move to at least C tier, if not B tier, in terms of strength, even in like middling ranks. Um, okay, best heroes, Lucio, maybe. Do Doom is way too high. Genji's too high. Tracer's too high. Diva's too low. Reaper's too high. Ryan's fine. Sojourn's too high. Zarya's too low. <laughs> Sigma is probably too low. Bap is probably too low. They'd be to be good. Winston might be too low. Wait, what is this aggregate? Oh, okay. Widow is probably too low. I think Zen Mercy maybe are probably fine. Maybe Zen needs to be above and Mercy stays. Bastion needs to be lower. Again, if we're talking like high level play here, Brig needs to be slightly higher. Orisa maybe even a little bit lower. Torrid probably should be lower. Symmetra probably lower. No way Hog is the worst hero when you compare Hog to like Symmetra, Hog to Torb, Hog to Orisa, Hog to Bastion. Hog is not that bad. Hog is not that bad. Having a hero that could just win flank wars is, is like quite good. Crimzo, 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 Crimzo. Again, low hanging fruit here. Like I can't really argue with this. I think I could argue with like maybe Soldier could be like A tier, but like this seems reasonable. Doom I think is too high. I think Doom is like solidly B tier. I think like People are overreacting with Doom. Um, this is relatively reasonable. I think maybe you could bump Widow up depending on the situation. I think Sombra's a little too high. I think Sombra's actually more like C tier now, more of a niche pick. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, I, I agree. I agree. I think Crimzo is like, by far the most accurate to me, which I mean, to me, it makes, which makes sense. Like pro player, um, I, I think this is like a very reasonable tier list, in my opinion.
Why Doom should be lower? Um, because he's still relatively he's still like he he struggles to get kills. Um, if you shoot Doom on off angles, he struggles with staging. Um, he can still be CC'd and like dislodged in his and he he's not bad. He's just I don't think he's better than Winston in all aspects. Like putting A and A. Like if you put Doomfist and Winston both at A or Doomfist and Winston both in B, I would have fewer problems. But I think he's still hard to. He's hard. He's hard. He's flipping hard. Um, this hero in general might deserve A as teams get better and better and better and better at Doom. But I don't. I don't think that's the case. I don't even think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to comment anymore. But you'll have to wait and see. Silosis Overwatch 2 here list. Okay, I'm gonna say this is from Alpha to cut uh, Silosis some credit, okay? Um, so from Alpha, this is a hard cap. 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 <laughs> no, uh, that's fine. This needs to be an S tier for sure. Uh, A plus, no, that should go to okay. Doomfist, A plus, no. Echo, A plus, no. Junkrat, okay, no. Down further. Symmetra, okay, no. Down further. Torp, down further. Widow could be a little higher, but probably fine. Farah is fine. Reinhardt, Winston, no. These heroes do not need help. They need to be bumped up. These are like okay or A plus heroes, depending on the situation. Zinyata as well is at worst an okay hero. So Silos' list is probably the worst one we've seen yet. Okay, from Overwatch 2 Alpha from Custa, reasonable, reasonable. Doomfist may be a little too high, Diva may be a little too low, but reasonable. Okay, Sojourn needs to drop. Well, Sojourn again, if we're talking about very late Alpha into Beta, Sojourn is definitely lower. If we're talking early Alpha, Sojourn needs to be S tier. So it's impossible for me really to say. Um, this is reasonable. I think Widow can move up a tier. Widow can move up a tier. But Custis is also reasonable. I mean, you could just see the people that have been like actually paying a little bit more attention, like more recently, maybe through scrims or whatever, um, have probably slightly better takes on that.